Today, we're gonna to talk about my five tips for avoiding burnout in landscape photography. Burnout. If you've been doing landscape photography for any period of time at all, you've probably gone through highs and lows. There's been days when the alarm clock goes off at four in the morning to make it to a sunrise and you roll right out of bed, ready to go, have the coffee going and out the door with a smile on your face. Then there's probably been other mornings when the alarm goes off at 4 a.m. and you look at it and you think about it and you feel cold and you go back to bed and you miss the sunrise that morning. It's just a natural part of landscape photography is there's times that everything is great, going good, lots of energy, you feel super creative, and there's other times you just don't quite have that and you can't even motivate yourself to go outdoors. There's even periods in between those two where you go out but you're just not feeling like you're super creative. It happens to all of us and you're not alone. What causes this though? What leads into this condition of burnout or this not quite feeling creative? Whether you're approaching burnout or have actually reached the point of burnout. Well, there's a couple things that can cause it. One of the things that can lead to burnout is just repetition. Going to the same places over and over, photographing the same scenes, or maybe even the same genre of photography. I love to photograph waterfalls, and so maybe I'm even switching what waterfalls I'm going to, but if I'm constantly photographing the same subject repeatedly, that can start to lead to burnout. And there's always the pressure to perform, this feeling that when you go out, if you take the time away from your family and you take the time to go somewhere and spend time outdoors, that you have to walk away with a great image. And that can start to build pressure because that's really simply not true. But if you have that perception or you feel that way that if I don't get a good image, this was not a good trip, it adds pressure. And that pressure dampens your creative mood, your creative flow. So that's something that can lead to burnout. If you feel like you have to perform, have to get those great images every single time out, it starts to become a stressor and impact your creativity in the field. Overcommitment. I think this one applies a lot to landscape photographers who are trying to generate some form of revenue, whether it just be sort of some side hustle money or whether it be trying to quit your day job and, and become a full-time professional. But I think this overcommitment can come into play because you're constantly trying to keep up on social media. You're trying to keep up on forums. You're trying to grow your own skills and, and learn things. You're trying to get out all the time. Just the sheer magnitude of the content creation and planning from week to week to week can lead you into sort of a, a a mode of overcommitment. You've just got too many things going on and you can't focus and you're always partially distracted. So overcommitment can lead to burnout. And finally, if you spend a lot of time on social media, you can fall into this trap of always comparing your work to others. And the thing with that to remember is that you're not in the same place in your photography journey as other people on social media. Some of them might've been doing it three, four more years longer than you. Some might've been doing it 10 years more than you. So you can't compare where you're at in your photography journey to where someone else is. There's also this trap on social media of people tend to only show the best. They show the successes or they show the failures that they think are clever, but not necessarily the ones that are actually more difficult to work through. So just keep that in mind when you start comparing yourself to others and social media can be a terrible platform for that. If you let it affect your mind, that can lead to burnout because you feel like you're just not good enough with contributes to negative feelings, which impacts your creativity and just sort of leads into a downward spiral. So no matter why you're suffering from burnout or in the position of trying to avoid it, I think these five tips will help you work through that. So my first tip is visit a new location. This one's super easy, but one of the things that can lead to burnout is that repetition, that always visiting the same places, always visiting the same type of place. I mentioned waterfalls earlier. I love to photograph waterfalls, but if I only photograph waterfalls, that can get boring after a while. So visiting a new location or a new type of location or even a new spot within a place you tend to go to can all help bring some new energy and some new curiosity to your photography. Makes those trips a little more exciting. That extra curiosity helps gives you that extra creative energy as you look at new things. Now, this doesn't have to be travel way far out of state or anything like that. It can be really simple. It can be like in my area, lots of metro parks. We have a good metro park system and they're usually smaller and they're not like grand mountain ranges or anything like that. But there's parks I have not been to that if I need a little breath of fresh air, I can go to a different metro park, only 20, 25 minutes, maybe 40 minutes away from me and see something new, something different. If you can get away for a weekend to a slightly longer trip, that can be great too, sort of a reset. Get away from it all and just, you know, right there, any new location with the time to explore can all bring creative energy to your photography. So going to a new location is a great way to re-energize your photography. And it's one of my first things I'll do if I start to feel like I'm starting to get burnout is find a new location and go exploring, even if it's only for an hour or two. 
So tip two is limit your gear. And I've actually done a couple of videos on this. I usually title them one lens challenge. But really what those are is sort of me either trying to learn a new lens or sort of break myself out of a rut because limiting your gear can actually force your mind to be a little more creative and sort of break that routine. And breaking that routine helps bring you that energy. So what do I mean by that? Well, for example, I typically carry at least one camera body and three lenses that allow me to cover from 14 millimeters to a 400 millimeter focal length range. I always have those options with me. But because I have those options, it's real easy to fall into how I typically see things. So if I normally see things in the 50 millimeter range, because I have all my lenses there, I tend to default to this is how I see the scene. I photograph it just like normal. And that leads to sort of that repetition, that repeating, seeing things in the same way. A great way to sort of kickstart and break that rut is to just take one lens. Limit yourself. In fact, if I'm doing this, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take a lens I'm not used to using. I've done this in the past with a 50 millimeter prime. So in that case, sort of in a range I like, but it was a prime lens, so I had to be shot at 50 millimeters. So I had to work with that. I had to work with composing. I had to do more moving. I had to be careful of not setting up the tripod too soon because I might have too tight of a shot. Um, I've done this with a 100 to 400, especially when I was first learning to like that lens and like that focal length. I would go out and I would only take my 100 to 400 and I would look at scenes like that and I would go to familiar places. So it would take a familiar place and make it different. Some of my favorite waterfalls are frequent. I went out with just my 100 to 400. It forces your creative eye to look at things differently and it breaks you from that rut and it really exercises that compositional muscle, that creativeness. So highly recommend that if you're looking for a way to re-energize your photography, you can't take a trip or you've actually explored all the places in your vicinity, pick out a lens you don't use a whole lot, take just it and your camera body out, maybe some filters if you want, and go play with that lens. It'll really sort of re-energize your photography and force your creativeness to look at things differently, give you that extra spark. Okay, tip number three is a little more of a mind shift thing than an actual tip, I think. But there's so much, I see so many people out in forums and social media always considering a trip a failure if they go out and don't walk away with great images. And really, that will lead to burnout because you don't always get great images from trips. No matter what social media looks like, there are lots of days I go out and don't get something I'm super happy with. Sometimes I get some good images, but there's a lot of times I'll come home and uh, not really a portfolio image. Might share it on social media somewhere, but it's not really gonna make my website or anything like that. So the way to break that is to learn to enjoy the process. And luckily this comes somewhat natural to me. I just love to go out and take pictures. I love to be out in nature. I love to go hiking and I love to see things in nature. The light changes. I can go to revisit the same place multiple times and have a good time every time because things are different and I just absorb it. The heat feels different. The weather feels different. There's raining. It's not raining. The clouds are different. All of those things I just enjoy. Even if I don't get a good picture, whether because something doesn't cooperate or I just can't get the composition I want, I don't walk away discouraged because I've enjoyed the process. And that's what this mind shift is. Stop focusing so much on the outcome and focus on enjoying the process. I think that's the key to long-term satisfaction with landscape photography, is you sort of have to enjoy the process. You have to enjoy the hiking. You have to enjoy the getting out there. Uh, you have to enjoy visiting the overlooks and seeing them change over time. A great example of this is a place in West Virginia I go to where I think I've probably been to this particular overlook 10 times, maybe more. I'll sometimes visit it multiple times on a trip. And I'm just sort of looking for this stunning, amazing portfolio image from there. And it's sort of a sunset spot. And it's a classic. I'm shooting into the sun and trying to get that great light falling across the valley and get the wonderful clouds. And I've got some good shots from there. I've shared plenty of them and we'll rotate some through here, I'm sure. But while I have good images, I'm still on the hunt for the great image. But you know what? I never leave that spot disappointed. I've been there on days where there were no clouds or the sun gets completely blocked in by clouds or you know anything in between where it just doesn't quite pop the way I want. But I've always had a good time. Just the entire process is fun. So even though I might walk away with terrible images sometimes because just nothing super great happens, I still have a great time. And because of that, because I'm putting my feelings and my, my excitement and my energy into the whole process, I think I can walk away from situations like that and not feel disappointment or failure 
as opposed to if I have to get that great image. If I'd have gone to that spot 10 times and not got the amazing image and that was my sole purpose and my sole goal, way more disappointing than being able to enjoy the whole process. So if you can make this subtle mind shift from enjoying the whole process and enjoying it for what it is, as opposed to putting so much weight on the outcome, I think that'll help you minimize burnout over time. So tip number four is find inspiration from other sources. Sometimes you're just tired of going out and taking pictures. Maybe you know you don't have a lot of energy or you don't have a lot of time, but the thought of going out and photographing things is just not high on your list. But you might be able to still improve your photography by consuming content from other sources. For example, I just did a video a couple of weeks ago on photography books and how they can be used for inspiration and to improve your own landscape photography. So even though you might not have the energy or time to go out, you can pick up a nicely curated photography book and consume it. Maybe you'll find inspiration to get out there. Maybe you'll see a different way to photograph something to give you fresh ideas for your own photography. Consuming content deliberately I think it can be a very important tool to keep things fresh and improve your photography as you go on. This could be consuming YouTube videos on photography, whether it be vlogs or whether it be some technical discussion on an area you're not feeling super confident in. It could be consuming photography exhibits outside in museums or gallery displays in your local area. But it doesn't have to even be photography. It could be you just go to the art museum and look at the paintings and get inspiration from that. Some of the great painters in the past will teach you more about light and composition than what you might read in a photography book. So consuming non-photography creative works can help. Maybe it's watching a movie and just appreciating the cinematic value of it. How do they frame the shot? How is it lit? All of those things can be things that contribute to it. Like do they do down low? Do they do up high? Well, just any of that. It could be reading a book. It doesn't even have to be a photography book per se. Maybe it's something about the, the, the creative mind and how to process things. Maybe it's a book on composition. Maybe it's not even related to photography. But just consuming content can often give your brain ways to think about things and, and provoke thought. And that thought sort of transfers into creativity when you're out in the field. So if you don't feel like getting out, maybe seek out inspiration from other sources. I find that helpful quite frequently. And tip number five is take a break. Sometimes you just need to put the camera down, not think about photography, not feel like you have to go consume photography content, not feel like you have to go create. You just need a break. Sometimes for me, this is a break in the evening. You know, I'm always trying to write a YouTube script or I'm trying to plan a next newsletter post. Sometimes it's just saying, you know, I'm gonna put all the computers away and I'm just gonna watch a carefree show on TV with no guilt for doing that because I need that reset. I need to not be thinking about the other things I could be or should be doing. So taking a break is important. It could be taking a break for a day. It could be taking a weekend off. It could be taking a week off. It could be taking a month off if that's what it takes to sort of do that reset. You don't have to be out photographing all of the time. The key to this is to take that break without feeling guilty. So don't be sitting around thinking, I should be, I should be, I should be. You don't, you don't have to. If you are feeling burnt out or feeling you need some additional energy, take some time to catch up on the chores around the house. Take some time to go wash the car, clean the car out. Take the time to go walk in a park without a camera. That can be great. Sometimes that'll be the connection that makes it. You just have to go out, take a hike in a local park. Don't take the camera, just enjoy being outside. So taking a break is a very valid option. And the key to it is don't feel guilty because you're taking a break. It's okay. Sometimes you need that little energy reset to be able to keep going and keep those creative juices filled. So those are my five tips. I hope you find them useful. They're useful to me. And as a content creator who's constantly trying to create content of either on social media or on YouTube or through newsletters or growing my own personal photography, I'm learning things myself all the time. And I'm always reading and watching and watching videos and trying to pick up extra information to make my own photography better. It's one of the things I like about this hobby is that you are always improving. There's always something to learn. There's always something to improve. I find enjoyment in that. But with that said, that's not to say if you overwhelm yourself with this or you let the pressure get too high, it can lead to the burnout. But these are my five tips for avoiding burnout. I find at least one of these will usually help me get through my little period of burnout or avoiding burnout. They don't all work all the time, so I can't always say go do tip number two, limiting gear. That doesn't always work, but it does help a, a fair amount. Visiting a new location doesn't always work, but the key is have a few options to choose from. And remember, that tip number five, just take a break. Just take a guilt-free break for an evening, a day, a weekend, a week, whatever it takes. Just reset that brain and come back to it re-energized. This whole hobby and profession is supposed to be fun. Keep it that way. So hopefully you liked this video and found it helpful. And if you did, be sure to hit that like button 
And if you want to see future landscape photography content from me, including tips, tricks, behind the scenes, mini gear reviews, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And thank you for watching. Thank you.